With Metal Gear Solid 4, Resistance 2, and Little Big Planet, is this the year of the PS3's comeback? This time in the bonus round, we preview Sony in E3 2008. Does the PS3 still have a shot at winning the console war? They're really starting to step outside the box and come up with these games that are just so different. And is home finally gonna ship this year, and will it deliver? If they get the 3D right and get the 2D wrong, that's gonna be a problem for them. Those answers and more right now in the bonus round E3 preview. Hey, welcome back to the bonus round in our special E3 preview. This time we're turning to Sony and the PlayStation 3. What can we expect? Well, joining me to discuss their E3 strategy is Steven Dottillo from MTV's Multiplayer and MTV News, and Guy Kroll from Level Up at Newsweek, and finally from Kotaku, Brian Crescenti. All right, guys, so Sony, let's start with you, and Guy, the uh, resident PlayStation fanboy, as they call you on the boards. Uh, <laughs> what can we expect from Sony here at E3? What do they need to be doing? <laughs> Well, I think they should cut the price. I mean, um, look, they've been consistently in the 150, 200,000 units range uh, on a monthly basis, and that's right. a good place to be. And they pulled ahead of Xbox in the main numbers slightly? Yeah. They did, but I, that's pretty meaningless. I mean, right. it, I think at this point, you have to still look at them as not even, don't even worry about them competing with Microsoft, right. just getting their own business healthy, right? right? And I think... The prices of the PS3 and the 360 are still too high, but PS3 is more expensive. So I think they do need to do that, but they've sort of said, I mean, their, their uh, financial predictions show that they're not planning to cut price. Yeah. So apart from that, they've just got to show some really good games. I mean, Game Informer just showed Infamous they right. just, on their cover. That sounds like it could be a really, you know, really good game. I know when uh, Steven was interning for me at Newsweek, he was a big fan of Sucker Punch. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, that was exactly. a different department. That was a different department? Yeah. Well, he was new, but that, wasn't, that, that, was that was 1999, the year you started playing games. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, the knives are coming out. It now, was so. 1999, absolutely. So, so Infamous could be big. Obviously, uh, Killzone 2, we're going to have to see what we got on that. Resistance 2. Uh, one game I'm really excited about, Brian, is Little Big Planet, which I think could be, you know, we've, we've had a chance to play. I think everyone here sort of unanimously agrees that's going to be something pretty special. Yeah, no, I think, um, I think Little Big Planet uh, is going to be amazing, but... I also think that it's sort of a sign of where, in some sense, where Sony's headed with some of their games. They're really starting to step outside the box yeah. and come up with these games that are just so different, like from that game company and some yeah. of the other... Flower, which we'll see. Right, oh, right, which yeah. is amazing. Um, and it's neat to see that they have decided that they want to not only come out with uh, AAA titles like Metal Gear Solid 4 or support right. them, but also come up with these new experiences that are completely untested. Um, and I think that it's going to really uh, serve them well uh, in the coming year. So, Stephen, do you think Sony, do they, do they have a shot to really win this console war now? I mean, Nintendo is, you know, outselling them, you know, four to five times a month. They still haven't even made up a lot of ground on Xbox 360, which had a year head start. What do you think Sony's endgame is here? Can they win? No. Right. The Wii is a pop culture phenomenon. But what I think that they have the ability to do that I don't think Microsoft has as much of the ability to do is to tap into some of that mainstream or casual crossover audience. And one of the games that really stood out to me at a Sony event that I think we were all at pretty recently was Buzz for right. PS3. And Buzz is one of those things where, you know, sometimes in an E3 or something, like you pay attention to State of Emergency instead of paying attention to Grand Theft Auto 3 and you kind of miss what's going to be big. And there's just something about Buzz PS3 and the idea that, yes, we know what it is already. It's a game show video game. It comes with wireless buzzers instead of wired buzzers, but this has been around a bit before. But there's something about the fact that now people can create their own quizzes for the game, and the fact that it's going to be this community of people all creating game shows for each other. And there's, I see a universal appeal to that, that I wonder if that's going to be one of the surprise crossover hits in, game in America. Right yeah, and then that's going, to sh that's going to pave a path for Sony to reach out, I think, beyond the hardcore. And touch a lot of people who are interested in some of the casual mainstream experiences that Rock Band, Guitar Hero, and the Wii in general have been you know, successful at, at reaching so far. And Guy, out of that whole lineup of games that we're going to see for PlayStation 3 at E3, you mentioned Infamous, you, know, you mentioned uh, Resistance. Are there other games that you really think are going to stand out at E3 for them? Well, I'm curious to see what the reaction is going to be to Pixel Junk Eden, right. uh, which is another, you know, sort of, it's from uh, Q Games in Japan, uh, 2D... Uh, it's basically 2D Spider-Man, if Spider-Man were trying to 
create plants in his plant garden. I mean, I'm gonna do a terrible job explaining it here, right. but it, the game just feels so good. And what's interesting was I was at a Capcom event the other day where I saw Bionic Commando, which also has a swing mechanic and it's 3D, and they've done a really good job with it, but I couldn't help in the back of my mind that Pixel Junk Eden felt a lot better. Right. And um, you know, I was exchanging some you know uh, Facebook messages with Dylan Cuthbert, the head of the studio, and he said that, I mean, it's been revealed, they're going to have a demo for these games. And he actually talked about GDC about why he doesn't do demos for his games before they ship, because he right. feels it actually hurts sales. He's so confident this is the best Pixel Junk game they've made yet that he's doing a pre-release demo. Wow. What was Pixel Junk for best of show right here right here? Well, you, you know, I'm a fan of the alternative games, man. I mean, like, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Desktop Tower Defense. Desktop Tower Defense. Defense. You hooked <laughs> Michael Pachter on that, and many fans of the show probably. Now, Brian, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is home. Uh, something that Sony unveiled uh, back at GDC of uh, 2007. Uh, it's been in beta for a while. There's been talk about it. Uh, is this thing really coming this year? Is it going to be a revolution? You know, I, it's funny because they, uh, an indicator for me is the fact that they still haven't allowed media to really check it out. Right. I mean, they have this beta that keeps getting pushed back and back. Um, you know, I could see them dating it at E3. I don't think it's going to be coming, um, I don't know, maybe it could come for this holiday, but right. I think it's going to be a hard push. And it feels like it's kind of lost a little steam, like everyone was really excited about it when they first talked about it, but since then, there hasn't been a lot of buzz about it. I think that... Part of that is on purpose. I think they're letting the buzz die down because it was a, sort of such a big announcement. Right. But I think what's more interesting about Home, uh, at least from what we've heard, some of the rumors we've written about, is are some of the elements that you can use to interact with games. Like I think it was Resistance 2 or maybe it was Warhawk we had heard that the game, there'd be a room inside Home where you could go in and have a literal sandbox Man, where you could yeah, like, right. you know, put down little figures and create, I mean, that kind of thing is amazing. Right. Um, whether or not I'd want to play Second Life on the PS3, I'm not so sure, but if I can go into a room and sort of pre-plan a, right. a massive uh, sort of tournament on, uh, for a first-person shooter, I think that'd be fantastic. 